You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 21st, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where Federal Prisoner Number 40892-424 is on the loose again. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. He's out, Blue Gal. He's out. Governor Blago is out of jail. He's standing right behind us. The calls are now coming from inside the state, which is hmm. deeply, deeply depressing, but predictable, you know. Well, I don't know how predictable it was. Uh, I I think a lot of people, particularly uh, Republicans in Illinois, were somewhat surprised and certainly put off by... Yeah. We might as well just dive right into this. This won't take over all of our podcast. I realize people outside Illinois aren't as appalled by the Blago pardoning as they are appalled by everything else that happened this week. So, True. True. But in Illinois, Republicans are appalled that Donald Trump commuted the sentence of Blagojevich, Rod Blagojevich, former governor of Illinois. Which is why he will, they will never, ever vote for Donald Trump They will again. never vote for Donald Trump oh, ever. No, enough. they definitely well, will. That's not it. But they did do a sternly worded letter yes. to Donald Trump. The entire Republican House caucus from Illinois mm -hmm. signed this letter saying they were not happy that this had happened. And we should just remind our listeners what Rod Blagojevich was guilty of doing. Uh, everything. Pretty much everything <laughs> Donald Trump was accused of doing. Uh, corrupt, right. Corruption, bribery. I think there was wire fraud thrown in there. So it was done over the phone. Um, abuse of office. It was it was the whole thing. It was the whole nine yard. And it was and his his major crime was stupidity because he knew he was being wiretapped. He knew they were listening. He knew that he stank to high heaven uh, because the special prosecutor was saying as much and people around him were saying as much. And he and he did all of his business on the phone anyway because fuck you, I'm the governor. I can do whatever I want. And he got caught. And he was uh, and and he is a a typical Illinois corruption story. He married the daughter of a prominent former alder, a prominent Chicago alderman, now former alderman Dick Mel, and he rose to power sort of under his wing. He went to Congress for a little while. He did a shitty job at law school out in Pepperdine uh, in Malibu, where he mostly surfed and drank and fucked around. And then he wanted you know, to go into the family business, so he, they got him into Congress. And then in Illinois, uh, George Ryan, the the corrupt. Republican governor who preceded the corrupt Democratic governor went to jail uh, because a family, a, a pastor and his family died in a car crash that was precipitated by a truck driver who had purchased his driver's license at one illegally. of the- yes. Illegally, yes. Illegally. Didn't, no, he didn't go for a test. They bought it as a campaign contribution. That's how George Ryan, one of the many, many, many ways that George Ryan raised money for his campaign was to tell- the secretary of state's office to because he was the secretary of state for a while that um here's what we're going to do we're going to sell driver's licenses now i don't think he ever told anyone that point blank but he was real clear that everyone would be very cool with raising money however you're supposed to raise money because it's one of those things where here's your here's how much you're going to raise to keep your job and whatever you have to do just go out and do that so they ended up selling driver's licenses to a bunch of people that did not know how to drive and and killed people. People died because of this, because of bribery and corruption in Illinois. So George Ryan goes to jail. For the first time in a quarter of a century, there's a shot at getting a Democratic governor in Illinois. Fun fact, we go to church with a former governor of Illinois. That's how sort of local everything is. Mm -hmm. I, ha I have eaten at a place where Jim Thompson was eating, you know, three tables away. Having Republican governors was sort of the thing we did. It was just sort of Democrats run the state house and Republicans run the governor's office and they sort of broker deals. And that's how things go. Well, so, and that that's in, true in Massachusetts too. They're yeah. Liberal states that where the wealthy people still want some sort of hedge on state taxes yeah. puts a Republican in the governor's office as a veto to 
crazy high state taxes for rich people. Yeah, that's this, that's what it is. This all sounds like these days talking about the Battle of Hastings. You know, it's all yeah, it's right, all, exactly. it's all knights and arrows and mounted. It, you know, well, what? it's Bill Weld. It's yeah. Bill Weld Republicans, and it, it, they don't exist anymore. No, they're just. Know? And so uh, Illinoisans Collective Wisdom decided to elect the worst possible candidate in the Democratic Party, and that was Rod Blagojevich. Uh, who, and there were a lot of people running for that that uh, spot on the ticket at the time, right? He had a lot of primary opponents, but he's the one that won the primary. Yeah, he he ran against a field, and he wrote he did the whole thing. He but he basically had the blessing of his father in law and the the what was left of the Democratic machine. And so there he goes, off he goes. He did a terrible job as governor. He the first thing he did, one of the very first things he did was destroy the economy of Springfield by moving state jobs out of the state capital to Chicago where because it's more convenient for him to have them there. So he there's no great love for Rob Goyevich down here in Trump country anyway. Right. Um, but the, the signature thing was he he tried to sell Barack Obama's Senate seat for money. He shook down a children's hospital, um, extorted a children's hospital for campaign purposes. That was an all around horrible, shitty, awful person who, in addition to just being awful and horrible and corrupt and a criminal, the worst thing was that he did all of his crimes as head of the government in Illinois. Mm -hmm. The betrayal of your public trust was the, was the real knife through the heart. And to me, that, that whole story of the hospital shakedown yeah. is so similar to the Ukraine phone call. It's, yeah. it's almost tit for tat, the, the same kind of corruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't recall, but I believe I might have voted for Judy Bartopinka <laughs> because what? she was a Republican. And honestly, I just was fucking sick of Rod Blagojevich. We were all sick of Rod Blagojevich. So Rod gets caught. Uh, and here's the thing. This is where um, this story, which is a, a mirror image of what happens, what is happening in Washington with Donald Trump uh, on a much grander scale because Rod Blagojevich didn't have nuclear weapons, didn't have his own you know, intelligence services didn't have his didn't have access to the justice department but it was every bit as corrupt and corrupting but in illinois it was unanimous minus one that he was impeached he was removed by the senate unanimously under this mm -hmm. is all uh, democrats control both houses so right democrats right. voted to remove a democratic governor um uh unanimously minus one and swiftly and, yes and, yeah right. quick as hell and then they uh, voted to make sure he was barred from ever holding state office in Illinois ever again, which was you know, a kick in the teeth. And then they took him off to jail and they took him to trial. They took him to jail. And I remember this because there was all these overlays during this period. This was January 30th. This was that the, the end of January. And it was the same month, roughly the you know, same week period, the week or 10 days when Barack Obama was being sworn in as president. Right. That that Blanco was being hauled out of office in, in the state where Barack Obama served in the state legislature right. and, as the state, and as the senator. And yours truly was laid off from his full time job with the city of Chicago. at the Along same time. with a whole lot of other people. Oh, with a whole lot of yeah. other people. Yeah. And it was it, so I have very odd feelings about that time. I get a lot of things tangled up in my emotional memory. But I do remember that for a long time, the, the whole time when it was. Leaks were coming out, and here's what we have on tape, and we caught him cold, and 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 all of his absolute blanket denials. Just this is a this is a conspiracy. I did nothing wrong. Which I might add, it's like he stopped mid sentence when he was removed from office, and began in the same sentence when he was let out of jail this week. Oh yeah, he was the same yeah. guy. I did nothing wrong. It was a terrible conspiracy. I was a, I was a political prisoner. Um, I want to work for for political prisoners and over incarcerated people because I was one of them. I am one with you people because I too was unjustly thrown into jail. And the only thing I can add to the story is that when I go out uh, to the local diners to do my research for the New York Times article that I'm sure I'm going to get from interviewing Trump voters, they like to talk about Rod Blagojevich. Yeah, right. <laughs> what a corrupt asshole. Typical, yep. typical liberal. Typical Democrat Republican asshole. Yep. And he's there. I just, he's there poster boy He's for poster democratic boy. corruption yes and I just, right and I, and I wait and i wait like a fishing hole i say by the way who was governor before rod, rod was that your guy george ryan and i get the dirtiest fucking looks because mm -hmm. i'm How cheating dare you remember so the past you yep. are cheating you're not supposed to bring the fact that we have a governor who who did time in the gray bar hotel too that is not fair 
That is not fair. You're not supposed to mention that. And now and, Donald Trump, their God, has pardoned yeah. the guy that they leaned on mm -hmm. over and over again as an example of democratic corruption. Yes. And, and I, they are betrayed. I mean, well, even even our local newspaper, who we rag on a lot for timidity, mm -hmm. ran an editorial from the plumb line about Blagojevich. Mm-hmm. The plumb line. Yeah, well, uh, it, don't forget it about is, it. It is a, it, there is a difference. There is a difference in the way this is being uh, reacted to. I, I just want to add one PS to that, and that yeah. is there, there was a rush to get Blagojevich out of office in January of 2009, because in February of 2009, it was the 200th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth, mm -hmm. which is an international thing for Illinois. And uh, you were not going to have the Democratic Party in Illinois was not going to have President Barack Obama from Illinois come to Illinois to celebrate Abraham Lincoln's birth and the bicentennial of Abraham Lincoln's birth with the guy who is also a Democrat who tried to sell Barack Obama's Senate seat standing next to him as governor of Illinois. Mm -hmm. That was just not going to be the picture that came out. No. And so uh, removing him from office, what there was an urgency to that, uh, just in terms of PR, just pure PR. So, so yeah, so someone was taken away from Illinois Republicans this week in bragging rights about how bad Blagojevich was. Well, he can't be a bad bad because Donald Trump pardoned him it, or it, Commuted his sentence. I'm sorry. From 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 one perspective, you're you're quite correct. From another perspective, this is just one more bullshit, you know, talking point that has blown up in their face. That yeah. from which they will learn nothing, and they'll yeah. go oh, on yeah. to the next talking point. Yeah. They'll, they'll yeah. go back to emails. They'll go to Russia's. Uh, well, it's our a friend. proof for both sides too. You know, both sides. So. If you're if you're really really interested in Rod Blagojevich, I wrote a whole bunch of corrupt governor updates uh, back in the day. I did a whole bunch of photoshops. I never thought I'd ever have to use again, but I had to drag right. them out of storage this week. Yeah. Um, but it really is in a microcosm of the corruption of the head of state and how that corruption filters down to everyone around them. But the difference is the absolute difference is in Illinois, we impeached the son of a bitch, we removed the son of a bitch, and we told yeah. him he could never ever ever serve public office again, and then we put him on trial. And that is not going to happen to Donald Trump because the Republican Party is complicit in every way. They are they're they're mutual benefactors in this treason they're committing. That is the difference. And and yep. they don't yep. care. They don't. Yeah. I mean, they own the Justice Department. They own the Senate and they own the White House and they own most of the courts, except there's a few exceptions there. And so they don't care because there's nothing you can do to stop him. There's nothing. There's nothing you can say. There's no there's no persuasive words you can drag out. There's no. A penalty you can assess against them. There's no future finger wagging, et cetera, because they've they've already learned that no one's going to hold them accountable ever. They learned that from the Iraq War. They learned that from obstructing Barack Obama. They learned that from impeaching Bill Clinton. That nobody is going to take a big fucking stick and beat them to their knees, no matter how badly they behave, because that would violate the politeness compact that the media has and still holds to, even though it's completely out of date and actually toxic. So. Moving the on. Only, the only way to beat them is at the polls. Well, yes. And uh, we're going to do that. We are going to do that. <laughs> Where do you want to go? Do you want to start with the with the PTSD that all of us are feeling? Or do you want to talk about the uh, debate first? Everyone's talking about the debate. And we'll talk about the debate because the debate was full of cool things. And But I'm sure you've heard everything about that. Right, right. So let's talk a little bit about PTSD. And and not to diminish anything that any veteran has gone no, through. Not I, at all. I don't mean to do that. No. I simply mean that the election of 2016 was a trauma. Yes. That most of us are not over yet. No. We're reliving and it every it, day, as a matter of fact. It may take decades for us to get over what happened. Yeah. If at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and and we're still grieving that, and we're deal, and the fact that you have to deal with the consequences of it every single day in the yeah. news is uh horrible. There's well, no healing. There's no prosthetic. There's no well, it's it's feeling never, better today about it. It's never over. I mean, and it's you never know, over. It, yeah, I mean, not that that cures anything mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a genuine post traumatic stress sufferer, but. The, the battle, the thing that's happening that's traumatizing us 
we are being re-traumatized every day and worse every day. Mm -hmm. Every day mm -hmm. there is some new horrible thing that Republicans are gleefully engaged in, laughing at us and inflicting pain on us just to make us cry. There's no mm -hmm. reason to do any of the shit they're doing other than to make uh, other than to hurt us because they hate us. And so it is it is an, a, a massively abusive relationship that we are unable to exit that we're afraid will never end. This will never mm -hmm. stop. This is just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And there's no evidence whatsoever that certainly the Republican Party can't be saved. It is what it is. It is a party of bigots and imbeciles and sadists and grifters. Well, if you will, if you will allow me for sure. a minute and a half to. Hey, you're the sound read... editor. You go ahead and do whatever you want. <laughs> To read some tweets from a thread that came uh, across the Twitter this morning. Uh, sure. We're recording on Friday. Mm -hmm. And it moved me. And I, and I think it speaks to a lot of what you and I have been talking about this week as well. And there's an end to it. But I, but I, wanna, I want you to sort of react to this with me. Okay. Um, Kathy O on Twitter said, If Trump is reelected, I'm giving up following political events. I am a young 65 years old, and I need to think about my mental health. I intend to bury my head in the sand for four years if he is reelected. I wouldn't be able to go through this daily for four additional years. And then she says, you question mark. Uh. And the replies are, I feel the same. I can't take Trump anymore. I read a scary article about how people are able to function in countries led by corrupt authoritarians. So scary that we have to start thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Counting the days until I'm no longer a state employee and I can get involved. I'm afraid if I became an activist now, I'll lose my job and I'm too close to retirement for that. Uh, I already can't stand it. Um all of the Republican Congress is letting Trump destroy our country. Trump is nothing for the has done nothing for middle class America, and no one is pointing that out. I am done. Uh, here's another one. Me and my health can't handle another four years of this, along with the stress of everyday life. Mm -hmm. Aspen says, "I'm looking for an exit plan. Republicans are more than happy to let us slide into an authoritarian state, and I will not live under a dictator." Mm -hmm. The only way he's sure to be defeated is an economic downturn, sluggish growth, and a big market correction. Would it be worth it to save our democracy? I say yes. I can't go through with Trump for another four years. My husband and I are planning to move to Co Costa Rica. Uh, I would love to leave, but I can't abandon my five grandchildren. What would they think of me running away? They love and look up to their nanny. I will stay in my country and focus on protecting myself and my family the best I can. That's all I can do. And so... When I read these this morning, I thought, well, wow, I feel heard. You know, this is yeah. something that you and I have talked about this week is if Trump's reelected, what the hell? What are we going to do? And that's a real possibility that he could be reelected. It is. It is. Absolutely is. And the more I thought about it, despair is the tool of those that want to keep us yes. where we are. Yeah. Vladimir Putin would love all of us to feel nothing but despair at this point. Mm -hmm. He can't make us vote Republican. He won't be able to do that. But he can demoralize us to the point where we give up and or fight among ourselves. Uh, so I posted a meme that I made of mm -hmm. Putin wants you. And it's got Putin pointing at you like Uncle Sam. Right. Putin wants you to give up hope, fight among yourselves, and stay home in 2020. That's what Putin wants you, what Democrats to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do that. So I'd like you to respond to that. Well, okay. Let me just say, I think you and I are on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just tell you what makes me uh, laugh, uh, what makes me shake my head in kind of like, okay, and what shames me into not quitting. Mm-hmm. The mm -hmm. uh, the thing that cracks me up is is I do occasionally listen to a uh, conservative podcast, especially by the Bulwark, because now they're in charge of the Democratic Party giving us advice. So I want to know <laughs> what I'm supposed to do. I used to listen to Subcommander Marcos over at Coase, and now I have no leader, so I just turn to Charlie <laughs> Sykes. I turned to Charlie Sykes and Rick Wilson when I need advice and counsel on how to do politics. Please, please, Rick Wilson, tell us yeah. how we're supposed to save the Democratic Party. <laughs> and, and Charlie Sykes was having some conversation and and wringing his hands about, oh, my God, we've had to go through this for four years now. I don't know how we could ever, you know, if we have to go through it for another four, I'm not sure I can take it. I can't take it. And my thought was, how fucking Republican is that? that, that <laughs> 
<laughs> you you've had to go through an asshole in the White House fucking everything up and calling and and treating me people like me and pe- things I care about like shit for three whole fucking years. Oh, boo, fucking who? That's mm-hmm. your party, Charlie. Now try being a liberal for the last twenty or thirty years, because we've had to go through this since before Clinton. We've had to go through this since Reagan. All those people you idolized as heroes of your movement were assholes who made today happen. So the idea that you're just breaking down in tears after a few years of it, fuck you. Poor Charlie Sykes. Poor Charlie <laughs> Sykes. Poor. Now, it, I, I granted you're sitting on a pile of money that you, you used uh, because you retired from being the Limbaugh of Wisconsin. Right. And listening to this podcast, hearing you talk about brushing lightly up against Rush Limbaugh, uh, who, who he has complicated feelings about just made me laugh because i'm like you are such a bunch of fucking snowflakes you have no game at all the minute things turn bad the minute it turns out that there's no place for you to hide there's no place for you to deny that liberals were right all along suddenly oh this is all too much whatever shall we do and and, and of course the worst possible case scenario would be to nominate bernie sanders booga booga because that that's that's just too scary to contemplate that's that makes me smile Uh What shames me is when I consider the number of African-Americans in this country who have lived under totalitarian states for hundreds of years. Right. Endured worse than I will ever know or have happened to me or mine Mm -hmm. at at all. Mm -hmm. Who lived under Mm -hmm. George fucking Wallace, who had their their family members lynched, who were told, if you try to vote, we will murder you. And persisted anyway, without any hope that anything was ever going to get any better. Right. Just the theory that if we just organize, if we just persist, if we just keep pushing, things will get a little bit better and then a little bit better next generation and a little bit better next generation. And eventually these these cracker mofos will have to give up power and give us something. And what we're going to do is hold their own words against them. We're going to shame white America because we can't shame southern bigots into action, but we can shame the rest of America into tolerating this bullshit. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So the idea that, you know, my privileged white ass is going to give up. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the pe- news because I just can't take it anymore. Right. When there are boys in cages, you're going to turn off the news. Right. People have died over this stuff. Yeah. People have died to give me the privilege that I now enjoy. Yeah. Is is ludicrous. And and let's say happy birthday to John Lewis. We are yes, recording on a- eighty John Lewis's 80th birthday. Yes. The third group I feel kind of sorry for, not sorry, not sorry, are the people who woke up w- just suddenly to this intolerable shock that the left was right about the right all along. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They woke up to find that their Republican friends or Republican neighbors really never gave a shit about this country at all. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. It was all bullshit. The, the deficit and freedom and constitution and rule of law. Family values. Family values, holding presidents of the highest possible state. Even the whiff. Deficit. Even a hint of impropriety. We should investigate. All of it was bullshit. Every Republican you know has been lying about everything your entire life. That is the only way they get through the day. And they've gotten away with it because we don't like to call people out for being liars in public. It's just not nice to do. Mm -hmm. So they've been allowed to to propagate this fantasy that there is this other Republican Party that thinks good things and believes good things. And really, there's like 20 of them. And they're called Never Trumpers. And they ran the goddamn party for decades. And they pretended and pretended real hard that they were all a bunch of chin-stroking, Burke-quoting deficit hawks. And that was never true. The only one I know who's telling the straight-up truth, swear to God, is uh, Stuart Stevens. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mentioned this before. The title of his book is It Was All a Lie. It Was All a Lie. And that's the the coldest, ugliest, most radical truth you can carry forward uh, from today forward is – Everything Republicans have said they believed all along was a fucking lie. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole bunch of people who are coming to the horrifying conclusion that they never knew their neighbors at all. They never knew their friends at all. All those funny, funny little jokes, all those sort of like edgy little sort of demi-racist jokes, all of the the chicks, feminazi stuff, all the ha-ha, isn't Rush Limbaugh funny? They were absolutely serious this whole time. They are fascist to the core. And and it becomes a huge shock that they weren't kidding all along. They, mm-hmm. they have no moral core. They're just power-hungry, racist, and fascist. And for them, for those people, it must seem like the body snatchers. Yeah, you right, know, right. They went to bed one night, or if you're uh, more contemporary and up on, on HBO, 
it's uh it's like being a cop in the outsider because mm -hmm. your worldview will not permit you to imagine that your friends were deep down monsters mm -hmm. deep mm -hmm. down racist and fascist they're they're lovely people and they, they throw a good barbecue and they care about that patching sidewalks all that is true but when it comes to the country and the state of the country they're the good germans and they always have been and and coming to terms with that is incredibly shattering and so that's why you see people digging into both sides, both sides, centrist, centrist. Let's let's all come together. Let's all reach across the aisle because that's all they know how to say. That's their theology. If you don't mind, if we get into this just a little deeper, because this is really an Please. interesting conversation, how uh, people who had to wake up to politics being important all of the time because we're losing our democracy. And yes. all of a sudden, the urgency of this taking over uh you know, worrying, worrying about day-to-day -day things, and you have to add this layer of stress. A lot of people on this Twitter thread said, you know, I already have a stressful life, and sure. now I have to worry about our democracy and children in cages and, uh, you know, the Justice Department being destroyed and so forth and so on. This reminds me, I know I've told this story on the podcast before, but it, it's been a long time, and I think it's really uh, germane to the conversation about Rodney King. And yeah. Rodney King getting beat up, you know, seeing it on camera and the shock to a lot of us, me, little white lady uh, living in Massachusetts as a 20 something being horrified that this happened. Mm -hmm. And I remember speaking to my dad. I want to wish my dad a happy birthday. He turned 84 this week. Uh, but talking to my dad and saying, Dad, I ha here. Here's the deal. I, I'm upset about the Rodney King beating, not just because it happened and it was unjust and it was horrible, but because of what it says about me. I'm a little white lady, you know, I'm I'm in my twenties, I'm white, I go to I went to college, I went to graduate school, I'm out of graduate school, and I have to ask myself now, do I give a shit about what happened in Los Angeles? Mm-hmm. And what can I do about it? And I have to really ask myself, what am I willing to do to make things different? And I, I remember this conversation so clearly because of what happened. This was before the cops got off. Okay. And this right. was me just watching the video, seeing it on TV, the evidence of my own eyes and saying how, how horrible this is. Mm -hmm. And I remember my dad saying, Fran, you know that somebody is doing something about this. You know there's right. a justice system. You know that mm -hmm. there are elected officials. You know that there is accountability. And you know that with this kind of publicity and evidence and it being on camera and it being, and this was, you know, the fact that it was on camera was a new thing. The fact oh, that yeah. police brutality was on, that was like, oh my gosh, there's video of something that black people have experienced over and over again. You know, the <laughs> John Lewis, again, here we go, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, when they when they drained the, the water for the missing boys in Mississippi, the missing white boys in Mississippi and found more bodies and everybody knew mm -hmm. there were more bodies down there. They were black they bodies. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's just too bad. That's what happened. And the sheriff knew and everybody knew. Um, but I, my dad said, no, you know, because this is America, you know that something's going to be done. And mm -hmm. you can trust that, you know, that doesn't mean you're not a concerned citizen, that you expect your country to do something about this. Right. That's right. And then what happened? The cops got off. Yeah. You know? And then the cops got off. Cops and then... got off. And then we had riot. That level of trust is being broken over and over again now. That's what's yes. being oh, lost yeah. Every here. Day. Right? Every day. Yeah. And so to me, what, what I'm seeing in this Twitter thread and what I'm seeing with people saying I can't take another four years of Trump is so many people. I mean, you and I are politics junkies. We've been politics junkies since Kennedy 80. You know, I've yeah. been doing this. <laughs> don't, don't rub it in. 40, don't rub it in, Blue Gal. 40 years of this. I you know. know right? I voted for John Anderson. Okay. okay. All right. That, you've been trying it. to throw that out of me all day. So fine. I did it. Purity. Reagan is on me, people. Purity. My fault. Reagan is on me. Purity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, because exactly. Right? I, I do. Believe me, I do understand yeah. 
the purity angels in their 20s yes. who were like, no, no, yeah. it has to be my uh, Medicare for all and everything else on my list or nothing. Right. And I'm like, I, I, I understand that I used to be that kid. Right. And then I grew the fuck up and realized, oh, there are actual stakes involved that people can get hurt. If you if you say half a loaf is not enough, well that that means everyone starves. Right. Well, the and I'm a I was again a privileged young man. Right. Right. Nothing was going to hurt me. I was going to go. I was going to be hauled off anywhere. I was going to be taken and put in a cage. Right. So it was right. it was it, it was completely. I was indifferent. I was abstractedly indifferent to the outcome of the election, other than me and my and my conscience. I just couldn't bring myself to vote for someone who wasn't exactly pure enough. Right. Right. Anyway, but but four years of being a political junkie and yet the last three years exhaust you and I to the point of, Oh my God, can we just leave the country? You know? (laughs) And so for someone who didn't think about politics every day until election night, 2016, where you thought the pollsters are right. There's a 92% chance Hillary Clinton is going to be elected. She'll be beat up. She'll be investigated by House Republicans. The 2018 midterms will be a Republican wave. And, right. you know, that's the way things are going to go. And we'll just go along. And uh, Hillary, so Hillary well, can so, yeah. veto the 900 Obamacare repeal votes that are going to come. You know, and that's that's the plan, right? Uh-huh. And right. none of that worked out. And all of a sudden, your pre-existing condition matters the fuck a lot, right? Yes, it does. And it sure the hell does. It's terrorism against the citizens of this country that this happened. This is domestic terrorism. And then you look to see, you know, your Republican neighbor who voted for this shit with this big shit-eating grin on their right. face. Right. And they're glad Fuck for you, it. liberal. Yeah, right. Fuck you, liberal. And you're a farmer and you're, you're, I don't care. I don't care. Trump's doing great for this country. And you realize, oh, the, the part that, the, the two parts that were exhausting, that exhausts, because you and I haven't just been observing politics. We've been involved in politics. Yeah, right. And part of the exhaustion comes from having rung this goddamn alarm bell for decades. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That if you keep playing, if you keep tampering with these dark powers, on the right, if you keep turning Newt Gingrich loose inside your party, if you keep letting Rush Limbaugh run fucking wild across the country, you don't police him. If that becomes the vocabulary of your political movement, if that becomes the ideology of your political movement, that people like me are the enemy and must be destroyed at all costs and fuck the fuck the price to future generations. Oh, and tax cuts will solve everything and regulatory rollback and pack the courts. If you let that off the leash you will end up with someone like Trump. Yeah. And we have been saying that for decades. So the idea that people are like suddenly, oh my God, how did all this happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know, and and the thing that, that, that pisses me off is it's like standing in front of your house, watching it burn, waiting for the fire department. And I have to remind you, dude, we don't have a fire department. You are the fire department. Mm-hmm. You should have put this out. This was your job. You are an American citizen, goddammit. You're supposed to be informed. You're supposed to not let Sean Hannity take a shit in your skull and call it knowledge. You're supposed to be better than that, but you're not. But your dumbass neighbor who doesn't pay any attention to anything is shocked that everything's going horribly wrong and wants to know who to blame. Well, they're to blame. And you're to blame. You, because you elected these sons of bitches and them for not paying a goddamn bit of attention back when something might have been able to be done about it that wasn't catastrophic. Well, here we are now. And part of the exhaustion comes from having wearied ourselves, warning that the day is coming when we will all have to pay a terrible price for what the Republican Party is doing. And now it's here. And the same assholes who are on television telling us about what what shitty people liberals are and how both sides are terrible and how uh, uh, Limbaugh is just a passing phase and don't worry about anything are all still there. And Tom Nichols said eight days ago, Trump's too stupid to become a dictator. Yep. Eight days ago. Yep. Tom Blue Check Nichols. Yeah. Yep. And this week it's it's cabinet loyalty O's and yeah. sh- shaving down the Fox News people to just those that are loyal to Trump. Just, just the loyal core. Just the loyal right. core. Because there's some people on Fox News who aren't loyal to me and we're going to get rid of those people, says Donald Trump to his Nuremberg rally last night in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, the, the circle gets ever smaller but at the same time gets more powerful. You know, go watch Judgment at Nuremberg. Mm-hmm. The way that the fascists got away with it in Germany 
was being fascist, of course, and having a complicit population who was willing to either go along with it cheerfully or look the other way cheerfully and just reap the benefits from it. But it was getting the judges in the courts yeah. on board, gutting the, the, getting to make sure the judges were all on board so that it was all legal. It was all legal. So is Donald Trump pardoning every thug in his universe? Is he pardoning war criminals? Is he pardoning Rod Blagojevich? Is he pardoning Milken? Sure he is, because he can, because that's part of a president's power. That's the unlimited pardon power a president has. And you, you had this sort of arsenal of special weapons only to be used in extreme cases, in, in, in case of World War III or in case of, of gross injustices that need to be righted by the chief executive. They're now just being used to make parking spaces for Donald Trump's henchmen. Mm -hmm. You know, just what well, bulldoze the justice system. Fuck it. Who needs that? Screw the intelligence organizations that that ha are deeply problematic, but are now being run by SS officers. Right. Who are going to use everything they find about everyone in this country as a weapon to keep you in line. To get Trump reelected. And right. the idea that this was all visible. This was all clearly visible on the horizon. At least England learned. <laughs> once, once the tanks were rolling through Poland, at least England got rid of the appeasers and put in the guy who said Hitler's really bad and dangerous. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that. Yeah. The same as clowns who got us into this position are now, have they changed their jersey slightly? Sure. Changed their vocabulary slightly? Sure. Is Bill Crystal deeply concerned about, about Donald Trump? Yes, he is. Why the fuck Bill Crystal is still extant anywhere is the question I have. And the answer is, the people who control the microphones and the cameras and the newspapers are not paying any price for this. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no control mechanism. There's no payback. There's no penalty for being deeply, horribly wrong about everything as long as you control the public memory and you can just pretend you never said it or it didn't matter or look over there. There's something shiny. And as long as the great distraction machine keeps running – this is not going to stop mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you are one of those dispirited people who are like completely freaked out that their government is now – that we now have a fascist regime in charge of our country, you will find solace somewhere in the mainstream media who will tell you that somehow, some way, Democrats are just as bad. Equally bad. And, you, and, they, and that is a market. That is a, mm -hmm. that is a way to mm -hmm. feed your addiction to taking no action and sitting on the sidelines That's and right. bitching without doing anything. Which means they're complicit with Putin. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So there you go. And there's a nice big bow on it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have confidence in one aspect of <laughs> what's going on. And I know it made you giggle, but it's so it – the reason it's funny is because it's true. Mm-hmm. Judge Jackson in the Roger Stone case handled everything perfectly. I really was impressed with her, and I recommend that you go and listen to Rachel Maddow read her decisions because she didn't go along with Barr and him interfering in her courtroom. At the same nope. time, he didn't punish Stone for Barr interfering. She really executed justice, and that was yeah. her goal, and that's what she did. And I, it was also very impressive, and you'll hear this on Rachel Maddow from Thursday night. Again, I recommend people go and, and listen to this segment. Uh, that uh, the, the, the one lawyer who was there for the prosecution uh, to replace all, the four who had quit was very <laughs> deferential to the judge, <laughs> mm -hmm. including up to the point of saying, yes, Your Honor, we understand <laughs> that, you know, dot, dot, dot. Bill Barr interfered in this case and should not mm -hmm. have done so. Uh, I have confidence in the hubris and the ego of the federal <laughs> judiciary. <laughs> yeah. This is their courtroom, not mm -hmm. your courtroom. And when cases come before them, now, yes, there are, there are federal judges who are in Trump's pocket, no doubt about sure. it. Sure. But there are judges who are not. And those mm -hmm. judges are to be cherished and protected uh, in our thoughts. Please keep them in your thoughts because their egos are yes. in the way of Donald Trump. Yes. That's that's a very check and balance kind of thing. Mm -hmm. like, no, no. Yeah. I, in this courtroom, I am the law. Yeah. And you're not going to step in here and, and tell me how your good friend Roger Stone is being pushed around and bullied. Yeah. Fuck you and your tweeting. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, now, do you want to talk about Steve Martin? Well, yeah, real quick about Steve Martin. Steve Martin, the comedian and the playwright and, and everything else. Uh, I was listening to him talk about playwriting and uh, being a part of the directing process on a play and because he's the author of the play. And he said that when an actor has a problem with a line, either they forget it or it doesn't come out right or the timing is off. He said, first of all, when the casting's done, I know I've got good people because, and he doesn't have to say because I'm Steve Martin. (laughs) He can Mm -hmm. hire the actors he wants to do what he wants to do for his plays uh, and the director he wants. Uh, But he said, when an actor that I've hired to do a play is getting something wrong on the line, I always blame the line, not the actor. The problem Mm -hmm. is with the line. And I thought about that in relation to Bloomberg's performance in the debate. People are focusing on the fact that Bloomberg is a privileged millionaire who no one has ever stood up to because he's worth $60 billion. Billionaire, not yes. $60 mm-hmm. billion is Over $60 mm-hmm. billion is what he's worth. They're focused on that instead of on the thing that Elizabeth Warren keeps coming back to, which is his behavior in terms of sexual harassment and gender discrimination. It's the behavior that is the problem, not the performance in the debate. That's right. And so, you know, we'll see how he does next time. I'm sure he's going to buy his way on. That's that's the other problem is his ability to buy his way onto the stage uh, Mm -hmm. and to buy his way into polls. I'm glad that we are focusing on the behavior and the lack of transparency. That's where the focus needs to be. And you had a fantasy. I did. About, do you want to share that? This was kind of sure. interesting. This this is not what really happened, folks. No. But, but this no. is the this is, uh, writer in Drift Glass. This is the right? behind the scenes fantasy scenario. Um, <laughs> keep holding your mind, Will Ferrell in old school streaking. Yeah. Yeah. We're going streaking. Everybody's going to come along. And and just keep that in the back of your and mind. He's running down the street naked thinking everyone naked. is streaking with him. Yeah. Yeah, and there's <laughs> there's and there's no one with him. Right. And then pull and that up pulls his wife in a car full of her friends and <laughs> everybody's doing it and no they're not. And just keep that in mind. The my my fantasy scenario was this. Before the debate, everyone who is not Bernie and Bloomberg and and just for a moment Think about the fact that one party contains Michael Bloomberg and Bernie Sanders. Yeah, right. That's how broken our system is. There's no other place for either of these two to really go anymore other than to be under the same. That tent is too big. (laughs) That tent is just too big. You think so? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's too big. In a healthy universe, as we've said before in this podcast, the two parties would be the Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren party and the Pete Buttigieg. And, uh, Amy, and Klobuchar Amy Klobuchar party, party would be the yeah. Republicans. Yes, That'd be right. the Republican Party. That would right. be, and we'd have these debates over over marginal tax rates and how best to solve this and that. That's what a healthy debate probably should look like. But this, but pr- what you're one, saying, is that the Republican Party is broken. It's completely broken. Yeah, there's no, there's, it's a rotting corpse of a bad idea, mm-hmm. and that that the Republicans have been feeding off of and pretending is a healthy corpus for years, and it's not, and it hasn't been for for decades. So. So my fantasy is that before the debate, everyone who isn't Bloomberg and Bernie got got together and said, okay, here's the deal. Liz, you go first. You take out Bloomberg. Take him out at the knees. Sweep the leg, Liz. Just sweep the leg. Take him down. And uh, Amy, uh, you and Pete and the rest of us will take out uh, uh, Bernie. That's the plan. Because, uh, Liz, you can't take out Bernie because you're sort of like, you know, in his camp. You're, so you're, we'll do you, guys that. Are, you guys have very similar policy prescriptions yeah. in many yeah. cases. Yeah. I, I and just 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 shorthand it. You guys are sort of on the same in the same area. You're on mm-hmm. in the same lane. So you take out Bloomberg. We'll take out Bernie. Those are the two front runners, and then the rest of us will just sort out what's left. And she went out and did her job. <laughs> took out Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah, the rest of them were like, "Damn, that looks like fun." And they just sort of gave up on on putting a glove on Bernie Sanders. Nobody touched him, and everybody decided to pile on. And I got to imagine in my fantasy scenario. At the halftime, Liz going, wait a minute. What? No, 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 no. See, here was our deal. Our deal was <laughs> you guys take out Bernie and I take <laughs> out me, Bloomberg. And I take and, out Bloomberg for you. Yeah, and, then... <laughs> and, and and what happened to that plan? And so she's out there streaking all by herself. <laughs> don't I don't <laughs> no want that visual. <laughs> no, no. 
she's a good no. runner, but I don't want that visual. Um, yeah, so it is interesting that Buttigieg and Klobuchar went after each other instead of yeah. going uh, wider and higher. I I find that a, a sign of a problem with their attitudes towards running, uh, that they're yes. going after the same voters, and that really is a minority in the Democratic Party. Yeah, the the uh, reasonable center in the Democratic Party. There is a place for it, but it's not it's not well, where primary voters are in the Democratic Party. It just is. You know me. the The reasonable center of the Democratic Party is Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, as as right. I'm oh, concerned. I understand that. So, I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. I am with you mm-hmm. on that. Uh, and never Trumpers need to stay the hell out. <laughs> yes, this was <laughs> a week. And a, <laughs> let's not go into great detail, but this is the week when never Trumpers prove they just cannot shut the hell up about our about our primary. Yeah. They're, well, they're they in their up to the party. Chin. They, their party isn't having primaries this year. Right. So, so and why is that, Blue Gal? Yeah, why is that? Because Donald Trump has taken over. Yeah. Well, because your wish came true. You yeah. you invented a party that was full of reprogrammable meatbags who would do whatever Fox News told them and and would get a president that looked like them. Yeah. That was your dream. Well, your dream has come true, and you have run from it, <laughs> like. Like, like you've run from it. Like, I don't know what in front of a storm you've sprinted the hell away from. Why aren't you celebrating? This is the party you worked your entire life to create. And now you're, you're so terrified about that. You're hiding in the rocks. Actually, you're not hiding in the rocks. You're hiding on MSNBC and yeah, NBC right. and CBS. And you're, and you're telling me how to run my goddamn party when yours has been reduced to a toxic rubble haunted by marauding bands of zombie idiots and fascists. Mm-hmm. So my advice to you is stay the hell out of our presidential primaries. Keep your goddamn opinions to yourself. When Jen Rubin is on Twitter um, talking about how mean and nasty Elizabeth Warren oh is. Oh, my and God. Nobody likes that. It just, just keep it to your fucking self. And there's a long list of these people. And they all have blue checks. And they all have media positions. And they're all, part, they're all exiled aristocrats of a failed state who all think they can presume to tell us how to run things because Mm -hmm. they know best. If you knew best, Donald Trump would not be president. Right. Period. Right. And I say that we say that uh, just just so that everyone out here knows this is a divided household we're speaking from. Uh, You know, junior dude is knocking on doors for Elizabeth Warren. And Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like our vegan middle child's going to vote for Bernie. And good yep. for her, you know. We're and I'm all in for I'm all in for Bloomberg. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Every, you, at least the, you got accused of that this week. I, well, I got accused. I got I, demands were made of me to prove that I wasn't. <laughs> I can not. Show me or not. I can vouch show me, for him. <laughs> show He's me your papers. In the tank for Bloomberg, folks. <laughs> and, and you know what? Here's the thing: if you are tempted to do that, first of all, come for me. Go ahead. <laughs> Second. I've been through all this with the Greenwald horde. Yeah, I've already seriously, done this you're double tested with the Greenwald. Like, Come on, man! You know the you're guys, guys. glass. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, if you really think you can come and challenge my liberal credentials after all this time, although as we mentioned on last week's podcast, a better business decision might be for me to become an intolerant purity asshole. Yeah, we've said where that I just many times. Yeah, you yeah, know, I think it's a great idea. I really, I've been entertaining it. Just conjure up some issue. Like well, $175 you, you dollar out, minimum wage. You dropped out after Tim Ryan left I the did. campaign, and that was Not it. Not pure enough. <laughs> Not pure enough. Tim Ryan was my guy. I'm a Ryan head from way back. And uh, I, now it's Jill Stein or bust. You know, because <laughs> honestly, Bernie Bernie is like way too compromising and centrist for me. <laughs> Um, and if 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 it, the minimum wage is not one hundred and seventy five dollars an hour, I'm out. I demand free pet grooming. It might as Why well not be Trump? <laughs> right. He might as well be Trump. The right. difference is really indistinguishable. There's not a dime's worth of difference between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. And Elizabeth Warren, please don't even get started on her corporatist chill. Blah 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 blah. I see anybody I can play this find game. One just it just jumped out at me on Twitter today of a clearly Russia directed Twitter account. It had an um, next to the name an American flag, an mm-hmm. ice cream cone. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> that's going to show America, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. a pizza. America pizza and, ice and cream. And it was Bernie or it you was bet. a Bernie or bust account. It was sure. uh, don't vote if it's not. Bur- that was the argument of this Twitter account that had been started in january of this year 
it was it was don't vote nine three eight seven five two five eight nine has spoken he I'm has spoken ladies and gentlemen cream cone. yeah come on come on you know what and and again if if you are a listener and you are one of the people who would have voted for john anderson in in two in, yeah. in 1980 i understand i really do understand yeah, well you did it I'm not, yes right, I, right i'm not mocking you for your principles and if and we have always said this, <laughs> vote for who you love. Oh, in the, in primary. the primaries, absolutely. Vote for who you love, to celebrate, embrace them deeply. You know, smell their perfume. Just completely give yourself over to their awesomeness, wh- whichever candidate that is. D- they're not the savior. None of these people are the Messiah. But give yourself over to loving a candidate and getting fully behind them, expecting to have your heart broken right. because there's only going to be one winner. But do it, do it, and then when the general election comes around pivot 60% of that energy to the candidate of the party right. that your candidate I, ran in. I don't care if you hold your nose and vote for the Democrat. I've done that many, many, many times. Yes. That is okay. It is okay that's, to be grumpy when you go to the polls in November. Of course it, it is. It is okay. That's what, <laughs> that's what the whiskey is for, okay? <laughs> so. Yeah, because we liberals are used to being disappointed, right? We are. And we are. And that's something we just have to do. Yeah. You know yeah. what takes the sting out of losing is having dinner with a listener. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. And we did that yes. this week. Thank you, we Alan, did. for dinner. It was wonderful. He took a us out to dinner. dinner. At the beautiful Cafe Moxo Cafe in downtown Cafe Moxo, Springfield, Springfield mm-hmm. Illinois. And uh, mm-hmm. it was a great time. wonderful time. And he's a great guy. We enjoyed mm-hmm. it. And we're going to see him again. That'd be great. Yeah. All right, let's do a news roundup. After you. John McEntee is the 29-year-old former body man to Trump who was fired in 2018 by then Chief of Staff John Kelly. It's amazing how many former employees there are at the White House. Yeah. He was he was recently rehired and promoted to head the presidential personnel office. Is this the guy who beat up his wife or the uh, ex-wife? I believe so. That guy. I believe so. There's so many assholes there. There I, are. I lose track, but yeah. But he's a, he's a white guy. The McEntee, oh, yeah. yeah. Very, and very white. This very, week, yeah, McEntee very... called in the White House liaisons from cabinet agencies for an introductory meeting on Thursday, in which he asked them to identify political appointees across the U.S. government who are believed to be anti-Trump. Welcome to the purge, people. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Shelby Pearson, the intelligence officer in charge of election security, who warned the House Intelligence Committee last week that Russia was interfering in the 2020 campaign to try to get Trump reelected. Trump reportedly erupted, quote unquote, and quote, berated, unquote, his acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, in the Oval Office following the meeting because of disloyalty. And immediately after pitching that hysterical fit, Trump announced that he was replacing McGuire with Richard Grinnell, the ambassador to Germany, and an infamous MAGA Twitter troll. He's also apparently going to remain ambassador to Germany while he is acting uh, <laughs> intelligence director, director of national yeah. intelligence. Because why not? Because why not? None, obviously, none of these jobs matter very much. No. They're just, you got to give them the authority to carry out the will of the group, dear leader. And it doesn't really, you don't need a lot of staff for firing people and hiring a bunch of internet trolls. That's, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, despite the overwhelming evidence of his guilt, Paul Ryan today. Remember Paul Ryan? Barely. Somewhat. He decided to say something today, huh? He spoke. Paul Ryan finally broke his silence, and we were all waiting, you know. <laughs> um, says that he does not agree with Mitt Romney's impeachment vote because Paul Ryan. Jeez. Yeah. Trump's reelection campaign and the Republican National Committee will spend more than $10 million to challenge Democratic voting-related lawsuits. The Democratic Super PAC Priorities USA has filed multiple lawsuits against states they believe are unconstitutionally suppressing participation in elections. Both sides don't. Think about the fact that one political party is suing so that more people can vote. And one side is is going to spend $10 million to challenge lawsuits, allowing more people to vote. Think about the the fact that one once one party got its solid majority, it got rid of the Voting Rights Act or gutted the Voting Rights yeah, Act. Yeah. So they could cheat. Republicans cheat. And that's, they cheat. that's if Roger Stone is pardoned, it's mm-hmm. because he has tools in his tool chest to cheat for Donald Trump in the 2020 mm-hmm. election. That is Speaking why he which, will be pardoned. Yeah. 
Despite Trump's tweet that Stone's conviction, quote, should be thrown out, Roger Stone was sentenced this week to two years and four months in prison for three obstructing. Th- I'm sorry, three years and four months in prison for obstructing a congressional investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Trump said he wouldn't immediately pardon Stone, but would intervene if courts don't overturn his conviction. Trump said Stone had a very good chance of exoneration because I personally think he was treated very unfairly. Trump also accused the forewoman of the jury of being an anti-Trump activist, claiming that the trial was tainted. One former senior administration official said, it's not a question of if, it's when. Yep. It's, it's over. It's over. Trump offered to pardon Julian Assange. Remember when everyone loved Julian Assange? If the WikiLeaks founder agreed to say Russia was not involved in hacking emails from the DNC. And the middleman was, wait for it, Dana Rohrabacher, who has confirmed that he told Assange that he would get Trump to pardon him if he turned over information proving Russia did not hack the DNC emails. 64% of small business owners approve of the way Trump is handling his job as president. Yeah, the good Germans. They're all good Germans. Despite Bill Barr begging Donald Trump to use his inside voice when talking about all the treasonous dirty work, Barr is doing for him, Trump retweeted the claim that he was, quote, the victim of a seditious conspiracy out of the Justice Department and the FBI uh, and the FBI. Trump demanded all caps justice for himself and future presidents and promoted the idea that Barr, quote, should clean house at the Justice Department and that Trump can, quote, appoint a special counsel directly to investigate the purported conspiracy against him. Trump threatened to file retaliatory lawsuits, quote, all over the place, unquote, for damages he claims to have incurred as a result of Robert Mueller's investigation. You mean the one where six people went to jail? That one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Rule of law. Hope you liked it while we had it. It was it was a nice thing to have around, at least in theory. John Rood is the is the Pentagon's undersecretary of defense for policy who advised against cutting off U.S. military aid to Ukraine. This week, Donald Trump asked for and received his resignation. More than 2,000 former federal prosecutors and Justice Department officials called on Attorney General William Barr to resign, claiming that his handling of Roger Stone's case openly and repeatedly flouted the principle of equal justice. Uh, As an addendum to that, uh, Citizens for Responsible Ethics in Washington have gathered 50,000 signatures uh, mm-hmm. just a, average citizens, uh, also demanding that Bill Barr resign. I'm sure he will resign immediately. Deep breath, everybody. We love you. Yes. Hang in there. Remember, before impeachment, chop wood, carry water. After, <laughs> After impeachment, impeachment, carry around wood, a bunch water. of voter registration sheets yes, in your purse right. or handbag mm-hmm. or computer sack and uh, be ready. Chop wood, carry water, register voters. Register voters. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitties are very special. Internet Kitties are some shelter kittens sent in by our listener, Jim. Jim writes, I finally signed up to donate to your Patreon, so I no longer feel guilty listening to your podcast. Well, thank you. You don't have to feel guilty, but we appreciate worry, it. Guilt, hey, is, uh, guilt is no longer a thing in this country, so don't worry about it. <laughs> We do appreciate your support on Patreon. Thank you very much, Jim. I look forward to listening to you every Saturday morning. I particularly enjoy the David Brooks rants from Drift Glass because he says what I am thinking. <laughs> you know, I'm trying That's to cut a back. Trump line. <laughs> I'm trying to cut back, Jim. I really am. <laughs> Below is my submission for Internet Kitty of the Week. I foster kittens for the local animal shelter. The goal is to socialize them while they grow big enough to be spayed or neutered, and then they are put up for adoption. These three little devils are one of the litters I took care of recently. They were sweet and affectionate and got into everything imaginable. Needless to say, they were all adopted quickly. So I have a question for Jim. Jim, are shelter kittens born loving freshly poured cat food, or is that a learned trait? <laughs> I think we know. I think freshly we do. poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, 
your cat or kitten will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit these shelter kittens. They did not have names at the time of photographing, but come on, they're kittens. They're kittens. Kittens for the win. You can send, you can visit them at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal, postal address, Patreon, all that information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like someone to reassure them that the Iowa caucuses are really, really for real over. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.